We are introduced to one of the main characters of Advent, John the Baptist. He has come to fulfill the hope and desire of Isaiah, the prophet, 700 years before. I send my messenger before you to prepare your way. A herald's voice in the desert crying out, make ready for the way of the Lord. Clear him a straight path. From this passage, it is evident that a major role of John the Baptist was one of preparation. What would the people of that time understand what was going on? First, at this period of redemptive history, things had to be crooked. They had the need for to be straightened. Moreover, the imagery of the valleys being filled up and the mountains being loaded implies that there are leveling was necessary. God is revealing through the prophet that a condition of injustice would need to be corrected or be rectified prior to the advent of the Messiah. This great leveling will be accomplished by the Messiah and will begin its preparation with his foreigner, John the Baptist. John was told to be there at the Jordan where Joshua brought the chosen people into the promised land from Egypt servitude and cleansed people with water for the forgiveness of sins to prepare for the Messiah's coming, for he will come soon. John has been given signs to watch for and he found the anointed one of God. The anointed one of God is Messiah in Hebrew and Christ in Greek. Jesus, in Advent we await the coming of the Jesus both at the end of time, at the end of our personal time. The word given to us is be ready. You do not know the hour or the day. Always be prepared. There is a real distinction between waiting and expecting. When we wait, we simply look at the present and what is happening. When we expect, we look to the future for some promised fulfillment that is beyond our ability. Waiting looks at what is not happening. Expecting looks at what is about to happen. This is why we do not simply wait for Christ to return. We expect him to return and we expect him to fulfill his promises to us. The difference between waiting and expecting is desire. I know that a lot of people are going to be coming to this church at Christmas, the Christmas and Easter Catholics. Many of them are in your family. We need to pray for them to return to worship. Right now, it's something that they can take or leave alone. God doesn't look at it that way. It is not something you can take or leave alone, worshiping God. It is a matter of life and death. Life here or death forever. It is not something you can pick up or leave down. It's something we have to really desire desire to be open to our God and desire for him to be open to us. In our baptism, we were given the presence of God in our souls. It is part of our identity. You can say you're a Catholic, but that's part of your identity. You are always a Catholic, a good Catholic or a bad Catholic an alive Catholic or a dead Catholic. But you always have to be a Catholic once you're baptized. That means we decide to allow God more deeply in our lives through his gift of Christ. Today and tomorrow, we will recognize, he will recognize us fellow travelers John would be given signs to recognize the Messiah. Was he shocked to learn that it was his own cousin who was to be the Messiah? 
God is full of surprises. Be on the lookout and expect with eager desire. Be on the lookout for God in your life. He's never abandoned you. He's never abandoned those others who come only at Christmas and Easter. God's love is always available. He cannot not love his creation. All we have to do is be open to it. Receive the love of God and pass it on.